Hi friends, welcome back to my channel Only Bio. Presenting up the important points from the chapter Cell Division from 141 to 160. Friends, this includes many many important points. So hang on till the end. Point number 141. The study of the cell cycle has vast relevance to the health, well-being and biology of all organisms from the growth and development of these organisms to cancer and aging humans to the potential for disease and injury repair via stem cell therapies. In adults, more cell division is involved in tissue renewal rather than growth. Many types of cells undergoing continuous replacement. Skin cells, for example, are constantly being slowed off and replaced. In this case, the mature differentiated cells do not divide, but their population is renewed by division of immature stem cells. In certain other cells, such as those of the liver, mature cells remain capable of division to allow growth or regeneration after injury. Point number 143. Some tissues have a greatly reduced capacity to renew the damaged or the diseased cells. Examples of such tissues include heart muscle, nerve cells of the central nervous system and the lens cells in the mammals. Next, microtubules present in the spindle fibers can grow or shrink by the addition or removal of tubulin molecules. Next, in animal cells, cytokinesis is achieved through the constriction of the cell by a ring of contractile microfilaments consisting of actin and myosin, the proteins involved in muscle contraction and other forms of cell movement. Next, some embryonic cells such as those of the fruit flies, that is vinegar flies, can complete entire cycles and divide in only 11 minutes. In these exceptional cases, G1 and G2 are undetectable and mitosis alternates with DNA synthesis. The next point, several studies have identified the transition from the G1 to the S phase as a crucial control point of the cell cycle. Stimuli are known to cause the resting cells to proliferate by inducing them to leave G1 and begin DNA synthesis. These stimuli call as growth factors are naturally occurring proteins specific to certain groups of the cells in the body. They include nerve growth factor, epidermal growth factor, platelet derived growth factor. Such factors may have important roles in the healing of the wounds as well as in the maintenance and growth of normal tissues. Next, cells in the body replace themselves over the lifetime of a person. For example, the cells lining the gastrointestinal tract must be frequently replaced when constantly worn off by the movement of the food through the gut. Next. Point number 149. The first stage of interphase is called as the G1 phase, first gap phase. From a microscopic aspect, little change is visible. However, during the G1 stage, the cell is quite active at the biochemical level. The cell grows and accumulates the building blocks of chromosomal DNA and the associated proteins as well as sufficient energy reserves to complete the task of replicating each chromosome in the nucleus. Next, during prophase, that is the first phase, the nuclear envelope starts to dissociate into small vesicles. The membranous organelles such as the Golgi apparatus and the endoplasmic reticulum fragment and disperse towards the periphery of the cell. The nucleolus disappears and the centrosomes begin to move to opposite poles of the cell. Microtubules that will eventually form the mitotic spindle extend between the centrosomes pushing them farther apart as the microtubule fibers lengthen. The cystochromatids begin to coil more tightly with the aid of condensing proteins and become visible under a light microscope. Point number 151. During pro-metaphase, which is also called as the first change phase, many processes that began in the prophase continue to advance. 
the remnants that is the leftovers of the nuclear envelope fragment. The mitotic spindle continues to develop as more microtubules assemble and stretch across the length of the former nuclear area. Chromosomes become more condensed and discrete. Each sister chromatid develops a protein structure called as the kinetochore in the centromeric region. The proteins of the kinetochore attract and bind the mitotic spindle microtubules. Next, during metaphase which is called as the change phase, all the chromosomes are aligned on a plane called as the metaphase plate or the equatorial plane midway between the two poles of the cell. The sister chromatids are still tightly attached to each other by cohesin proteins. At this time, the chromosomes are maximally condensed. Next. During anaphase, that is the upward phase, the cohesin proteins degrade and the sister chromatids separate at the centromere. Each chromatid now called the chromosome is pulled rapidly towards the centrosome to which its microtubule is attached. The cell becomes visibly elongated, that is oval shaped, as the polar microtubules slide against each other at the metaphase plate where they overlap. Next, during telophase, the distance phase, the chromosomes reach the opposite poles and begin to decondense, that is unravel, relaxing into a chromatin configuration. The mitotic spindles are depolymerized into tubular monomers that will be used to assemble the cytoskeletal components for each daughter cell. Nuclear envelopes form around the chromosomes and the nucleosomes appear within the nuclear area. Point number 155. Cytokinesis or cell motion is the second main stage of the mitotic phase during which cell division is completed via the physical separation of the cytoplasmic components into two daughter cells. Next, in cells such as animal cells which lack the cell walls, cytokinesis follows the onset of anaphase. A contractile ring composed of actin filaments forms just inside the plasma membrane at the former metaphase plate. The actin filaments pull the equator of the cell inwards forming a fissure. This fissure or crack is called as the cleavage furrow. The furrow de deepens as the actin ring contracts. Eventually, the membrane is cleaved into two. You can look on the screen to see exactly what happens during cytokinesis in an animal cell and in a plant cell. You can clearly see that they differ from each other with respect to cytokinesis because in plant cell there is formation of cell plate and in animal cell there is a cleavage that is seen which is not seen in the plant cell. Point number 157. In plant cells, a new cell wall must form between the daughter cells. During interphase, the Golgi apparatus accumulates enzymes, structural proteins and glucose molecules prior to breaking into vesicles and dispersing throughout the dividing cell. During telophase, these Golgi vesicles are transported on microtubules to form a phragmoplast, which is a vesicular structure at the metaphase plate. There, the vesicles fuse and coalesce from the center towards the cell walls and this structure is called as a cell plate. As more vesicles fuse, the cell plate enlarges until it merges with the cell walls at the periphery of the cell. Enzymes use the glucose that is accumulated between the membrane layers to build a new cell wall. The Golgi membranes become parts of the plasma membrane on either side of the new cell wall. Point number 158 the death of nearby cells and the presence or absence of certain hormones can impact the cell cycle. Next, the release of growth promoting hormones such as human growth hormone can initiate cell division and the lack of these hormones can inhibit cell division. Point number 160, cell growth initiates cell division because cells must divide as the surface to volume ratio decreases cell crowding inhibits cell division. I hope you're liking the series. Do come and share and keep checking with the playlist for many more topics. Thank you so much.